Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about the dirty tricks of old jujitsu. We often say that judo removed those really dangerous techniques and created a far more refined form of jujitsu where not only there is technical superiority but also growing as a human being. And today we're going to see these little tricks that once you reach a certain level you're very competent in the basics the big image which is the positions the takedowns the finishing of submissions when adding these then you will become far more dangerous a lot of people think that you only learn these wrist locks and dirty tricks which makes it very ineffective and thus you know bjj is so superior because they, because they understand position and you know the human body far better which is false in the past they had a learning of everything and then now with a lot of these you know specializations like aikido and uh you know these old koryu jiu-jitsu you will see um, a lot of people are forgetting a huge part of their arsenal and for their detriment so today we're going to be looking at uh jordan's video of course it will be linked in the description where he meets uh, a japanese jiu-jitsu black belt and he shows uh, these little tricks when added to your ground game they can be very dangerous so we're going to be talking about wrist locks a lot and the first one here is from the closed guard where you rotate uh, the palm and the fingers towards them and it's very painful and it's very dangerous especially in the ground aspect now wrist locks have been around forever and dirty tricks as well look at the top right image where you see he's manipulating the wrist he's turning it and at the same time there's a kick i believe to the knee or to the groin and then he proceeds to get someone to comply so these tricks are obviously for survival they're there to make someone comply it's for life and death situation self-defense in general and not so much for the sport aspect the sport aspect there is courtesy there is respect and when you do these types of moves there they will be very unsportsmanlike and uh, for a very good reason when you're kicked in the groin it's very unsportsmanlike so let's take a look at the wrist lock here in the aikido perspective or the context it's called sankyo so notice how he's gripping the palm and the finger very much like the jujitsu black belt and he rotated towards him now what makes this safer is that they're training in a flowing form, kata form, and also he's standing. So when you're standing, you can move with the direction of the lock, alleviating a lot of the pressure. So when you're on the ground and on your back, you're not alleviating anything. You are feeling it 100% and thus the likelihood of injury is much higher. And this is why Kano removed them very early on in the judo history so here you see it's a very versatile lock you can uh, get someone to stand on their toes and that's naturally kuzushi and you can throw them based on this one now uh, this next one anyone who's trained aikido they would know what this one is uh, it's called nikyo and it affects the wrist on the ligament level so it's incredibly painful you would feel like someone almost stabbed you in your wrist and when done standing you just immediately fall to your knees that's how painful it is when done uh, correctly and here again in the ground scenario there's no room to move you can't go down on your knees you can't move around in the direction of it so to alleviate the pain so you're gonna feel it 100 percent and Again, you're gonna get injured most likely. So here you see it, it's incredibly painful. I've done Aikido for five years and it's, I still almost feel it. So here you do it from a knee slice pass, uh, especially in Gi, because not only they're gonna be gripping, but they're gonna commit to their grip, which makes these uh, wrist locks all the more effective. So here you see it in the basic form you rotate it and all you have to do is brush your hand on their forearm and it will create that lock given the uh, fingers are pinned to the clavicle 
or when they grab their wrist you can rotate your fingers around and do it you can create the same effect here you see the shoulder lock after so it's a very effective wrist lock given someone is committed to their grip so when you're in a gi uh, sparring it's very effective now let's take a look again at the top right you see it's the same one uh, but with a kick so take a look at this it says here that uh, when Kano was the director of the Butoku Kai in Kyoto he banned all locks of the fingers toes wrists and ankles in the contests since 1899 so that's how long ago it was and also that's how long they saw the danger of them especially when they go on the ground especially in that period of time a lot of the fights were ending up on the ground so imagine the amount of injuries that they can have uh, it's crazy so this one here just a, a, a strong uh, thigh uh, hit to the uh, wrist so again it doesn't look very unsportsmanlike it's not very technical uh, it's it's a dirty trick to be honest i don't know if it's legal in jiu-jitsu but here you see that it's not you know courteous to be to say the least and here the uh heel to the neck to get someone to open up for the arm bar again it's not very technical it's very dirty you're not doing those wrist manipulations and here is another example of arrest techniques of kempo in the 1880s you see here it says that you should put your thumb in the back of the ear or underneath the jawbone in order for them to comply so basically he was doing the same thing but for the arm lock so it's very important to understand the difference between courtesy respect safety and technique technique and these uh, things they can spare you uh, when it comes to life and death of course let's just say i found uh, myself uh, in a life or death situation and I'm trying to finish an arm lock and what am I gonna do a wrist manipulation and transfer my weight to one side or I'm just gonna you know bring down my heel uh, to their face probably I'm gonna do the latter so you understand that these are very dangerous yet dirty techniques and they're very unsportsmanlike so if you're doing this in your dojo you're not going to have many friends and there's a reason why we talk about respect courtesy safety it's because of these because we don't know what these were like in the past and that's why they were banned since 1899 that's a very long time ago so uh, if you have anything else to add let me know down below consider supporting me on patreon for exclusive content this was shady and thank you for listening